Hello sewing friends, welcome to my sewing room and to a new video. In this one, I'm going to be doing some things I've only done once or twice before, as well as some things that I've never done before. And so this should definitely be a fun one. I'm going to be sewing a top, but sewing a vintage top, of course. I've only sewn, I think, one other top, and I will leave a link or put it up here if you wanna check that out. But it was a modern sewing project. It wasn't a vintage one like we're doing today. So today we are sewing a vintage top. I got this vintage simplicity pattern, and to me this top looks so cottage core, even though this is a 1950 sewing pattern. It is Simplicity 3195, and so I'm excited to make it. I'm going to be doing view three with those awesome sleeves. And so that's what we're doing. We're sewing a vintage top, but making it cottage core, also making it spooky. So I was at Joanne today and I picked up this Halloween fabric, this spooky fabric. And so I'm going to be using this to make the top. I got some really cool buttons um, for the sleeves. But if you see my last video, the dress did not fit me and lessons were learned. Today we're going to be doing a mock-up because this pattern is for a 36 inch bust and I'm really a 38 inch bust. We're gonna be altering it slightly as well as doing a full bust adjustment for the very first time. So I'm super excited for this. I'm excited to learn some new things and I hope you are as well. So if you're into this sort of thing, feel free to subscribe and you know, if you like the video, like the video and all of those things. But if you really, really wanna help me out, then leave me a comment or a question or some sort of feedback. Not only does it help push my channel, it helps push me. A lot of my ideas come from you guys. A lot of my motivation to keep going comes from you guys, especially like with that last project that did not fit. So please feel free to interact with me down there. I respond to everything and it is truly my favorite part of being on the internet. I'm very close to 3000 subscribers, so I would love to do a Q&A video. If that would be something you would be interested in, then feel free to leave me a question, either sewing related or just Drew related or Maverick and Major related um, as well. And I will definitely um, answer all of those in a video if we can get enough of them. So um, I thank you for being here. I thank you for watching. Um, I thank you all for rooting for me as you have been on my vintage sewing journey. And so I'm very excited for this make. I'm excited for the full bust adjustment. We will see what happens, but I hope in the end we sew a top, but make it cottage core and make it vintage. And so let's get into the sewing. So the first thing I'm going to do is trace off my pattern onto this craft paper I had. I didn't have any pattern paper. And so this was the best I could do. I've got rulers. None of them seem like the right type of ruler, but it's crazy that I haven't done this adjustment before because I am fuller in the bus. I can't wait to see how different the garment fits um, just from making this adjustment. I'm just always a little afraid to try something new, but I'm glad um, better late than never. Okay, so I traced out the front bodice piece and I pulled out my book and the book I'm using is the Complete Photo Guide to Perfect Fitting. Um, I did watch a couple YouTube videos on the full bust adjustment, but I learn a lot better this way. And so this is what I'm using. I did take my upper bust, bust, under bust, and apex measurements. And so I have those written down. I'm just gonna get started. Ooh, we were supposed to do other things before we cut that. Oh no, I wasn't supposed to cut this yet. So a big problem that was happening here was that craft paper. I wasn't able to properly trace off the pattern. I just sort of had to 
guess where to put everything because I couldn't see through the paper and so I did find this in my stash it's a weird texture it's not really paper I'm not sure what it is but it was see-through and so I was finally able to correctly transfer the markings and the things from the pattern onto this and it definitely helped the full bust adjustment process go a lot quicker I will not even try and say what exactly I'm doing here because I really don't know I was just following the instructions from the book I don't know how or why things were done and it was a super um, weird process and adjustment for me in hindsight I think what made this process a little bit more difficult was the amount of darts that are on this bodice there are four at the waist and then the two at the sides and so um, it was often hard and confusing to understand which dart I should be dealing with. So that process was definitely something. I finally finished it and I can see the difference. Um, my bust point changed and the waistline changed and it's lengthened. At the So if you're wondering how I am now cutting out the pattern directly from the original pattern pieces after I did the mock-up from the new pattern with the full bust adjustment the fit was so wonky and so weird I have no idea exactly what happened and it was actually too big and so I decided to just revert to my comfort zone and use this pattern in its original form. I am slightly disappointed that I did not stick with it and see it through, but this was supposed to be such a quick, easy project. And that full bust adjustment and mock-up took me a full day and a half. And for it to not turn out right was just devastating. I will definitely try the full bust adjustment again, but I'm going to do it um, on a make that does not have so many darts, at least for my first attempt at it. This was just way too confusing. And so here I am sewing in all of those darts. And this blouse buttons down the back and so I had to finish the edges of the back and then it will fold in to basically face itself. I have now sewed on, sewed the blouse at the shoulder seams and so now I'm going to sew it at the side seams and this sort of cuts in at the waist which I'm guessing gives it a really flattering shape but it made it just a little bit difficult to match up next step was to start work on the collar which in the past has been a little bit difficult for me I hope this collar make comes out a lot better so after I pin the pieces together I stitch them um, clip the seam allowance and turn them to the right side and then I pin them to the neck edge of the top, matching up the shoulder seams and the dots. And then I stitched them down and finished the edge just by folding it down and whip stitching it. I could have finished the edge with the seam binding like the pattern said, but at this point, um, Halloween would had came and went if I spent any more time on this project that was supposed to take one day. But in the end, the collar looks pretty nice. And this is how I finished the edge. Um, it's decent. And so the next step was to start work on the sleeves, which I pinned together and then stitched only to realize that I should have gathered them down at the top between the dots and at the bottom between the dots before I stitched them. And so I picked them apart and completed the step in the order that I was supposed to. Mm -hmm. 
It's a little unfortunate how warm this spooky season is in my part of the U.S., so I am still having my coffee iced. With Javi Coffee Concentrate, I add two teaspoons to my water along with ice and a teaspoon of caramel, and I have quick iced caramel coffee. You can add this to milk or hot water as well, depending on your preference. If you would like to give it a try, my coupon code will be in the box below. So thank you to Javi. This is just the boost I need to finish this project, so let's get back to it. So I have the cuffs pinned together and now I will take those to the sewing machine and it is basically the same process as the collar. You stitch it all together, leaving the top edge or the notch edge rather open. You trim your seam allowance, you cut your points and you flip to the right side. So these are the buttons that I have for the cuffs. I have some authentic vintage buttons that I'm going to use for the back. I can't wait for you to see those. So I got these stitched on after I made the buttonholes and this top is coming quite along. So the next step was to get them pinned right sides together to the edge of the sleeve, which it was a little bit difficult just because how much the sleeve is gathered down. So sewing was a little bit difficult and because I had already put the buttons on at times they were in the way. So after those were attached, the next step was to attach the sleeves to the bodice. This marking you see here is because the seam allowance is a little bit different on just that small portion of the blouse. And so I had never seen that before where the seam allowance changes just for a bit. So I marked it out so that I could clearly see where I was supposed to be. And so I gathered the sleeves down after I pinned up the notches and the points and the side seams. So I got the sleeve attached, it went on pretty well. I still need to remove the gathering stitches, but I'm pleased with how it went on there. The cuffs look really well and the buttons on there. And so um, I use these authentic vintage buttons down the back, which I will show you now. Oh shoot. And these buttons are authentic vintage from around the 60s or 70s, I believe. I picked them up at the sale in Tuberville. And so I'm very pleased to finally be using something from the sale and I think it made this top look a little bit fancy and so it's all done so time for the reveal.